Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing fine. A couple of weeks ago when I was browsing through the tournaments I saw that there is the very interesting German Bundesliga going on and I decided to check the games and then I saw that one of the games ended quite abruptly and quite quite quickly. I had a look and it was my former teammate Alex Reichmann playing with the white pieces but he turned out to be on the receiving end of a very nice miniature. Since I want to start a new series uh, known as tricks and traps in the openings, I believe that this is going to be quite an interesting game for you and it's not going to take a lot of time as you're about to see. This game is rather short. Alex is a strong international master and back in 2008 and 2009 and some years afterwards when he was playing for our team he was already quite an aggressive player himself. Here he is playing a very experienced I am and also quite a strong I am Thies Heinemann with the black pieces. Alex goes for knight f3 and he obviously wanted to meet the Queen's Indian defense somehow and after the move b6 he chose the main system with g3. Heinemann played bishop a6, bishop b7 is the other move and then after knight d2, bishop b4, queen a4 and c5 they turned into this situation. They got into the situation where white had won the bishop pair, but as a result of his relatively uh, slow play, black has a little bit of advantage in the development, and he is trying to make use of that by quickly finishing this development and going for the central play with d5. That's quite logical. If you have a better development, you're trying to open files as fast as you can, as quickly as possible. Now bishop b7 is also a move by the way here and there is also an approach like that one to which white is going to be safer though after he takes on c5 although black would be also happy to have this nice central pawn structure as the practice has proven let's say short castle a5 and queen c7 there is this maneuver rook a6 the rook is defending the pawn on d6 and also it is ready to come on b6 for some counter attack all in all this is also quite a nice position for black and he doesn't have huge problems in maintaining the balance. In fact, anytime he manages to trade the light squared bishops, he might be even more preferable, to be honest with you, as this pawn on b2 is somewhat uh, weak at the moment. True, the one on d6 is not great, um, but it has perspective for the future. Anyway, I got carried away. Uh, what I wanted to show was the situation after g5. White took black took back, and all of this have been seen so far, and there are three predecessors. In all of them, white did bishop g5 here. A move that makes sense, and which is trying to discourage the move rook e8. Although, if I have to be honest with you, it, it is not exactly discouraging it, as on the bishop takes f6 there is the in-between capture on e2, and only after that black is going to capture on f6 with the queen. So perhaps this rook e8 is one idea, for black to fight for equality and say after e3 he can do queen d7, get rid of the pin and trade the queens. And this looks quite 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 nice for him. On the other hand, queen e8 has been played so far rather than rook e8 and this also turned out to be very good for black. After the trade of the queens, rook e8 the spawn is still hanging and anytime white defends it with e3, knight e4 is coming with the tempo followed by knight to c6 and if you notice in this line the bishop on g5 was standing not very well and black attacked it and he gained a tempo to get very nice position this is the game born in against uh, Walter Brown where black is already having an excellent position I believe yeah white has still the two bishops but they are not giving him much at the moment plus he has difficulties with the castling and the skink is not feeling generally well there are some juicy squares for the black pieces and the queenside majority can mean something in the future as well. Anyway, perhaps white should have gone for that one rather than for the novelty that he did in this game, which was b4. Looks quite logical actually. White wants to shut this bishop and to get rid of the influence of that piece on the e2 square so that he can safely castle after that. The reality is though that he doesn't have the time for this. And after rook to e8, one more mistake comes next. b5. 
after which all of a sudden he is even losing. So rather than playing b5, he should have somehow defended the e2 square. I guess that Alex's idea was to meet uh, the natural queen e8, which have been played before, with a simple capture on e8, and after that to go e3, when the bishop is no longer on g5 and black is not going to attack it with knight e4. But by doing so, he kind of, um, I believe, not that he missed the move rook e8, but he kind of underestimated that move, especially, um, and I'm pretty sure he just missed the next move. The next move is actually very beautiful, so if you have time, you can uh, you can pause the videos and try to find it for yourselves. If you don't have time, enjoy it. Rook takes e2, getting to that kink in the middle. After king takes e2, obviously there will be queen e8 check. And that, that line king f1 and bishop e5 is quite obvious. Also obvious, the other line with knight e5, bishop b5. In both the cases, uh, there is this double attack against the king and the queen, and black is winning it. It's not so obvious how exactly is black winning after king d1, but if we move one move further after bishop b5, we will see that this queen has only squares on this diagonal, and on the same diagonal is the king, unfortunately for white, and he's still losing the queen after queen b3 or queen c2. It doesn't really matter, bishop a4 is winning it plus a pawn, plus his king is going to be horribly placed, so all in all this is no go. Okay, Alex tried king to f1, but it's quite obvious that his opening experiment did not work, and Chis Heinemann is confidently finishing the game with some really strong blows. Queen e8, first of all, is defending the bishop with the tempo, and is bringing the queen into the play, it's also defending the rook, and on rook b1, he jumped knight e4. He is not giving a single moment to his opponent to get some rest. The bishop is hanging, the pawn is hanging, and there are a lot of nasty uh, tricks with knight c3 involved. If king takes e2, obviously there will be discovered double check, and the queen on a4 would be lost. And bishop e1, which was played in the game, was met with one more nice tactical blow, rook takes e1 check. Once again, if the king takes, there is knight c3 check. Uh, if the rook takes, there is bishop b5, the same old idea. And finally, knight e1 was answered, knight e2, king g1, knight takes b1. Everybody is grabbing something, but white is losing heavier. He has more stuff to lose. He's down a piece, and after bishop b5, he's losing more. Is This is a threat, and this is a threat. And white resigned, not wishing to see queen takes a8, bishop c6, when he would either lose the queen further, or he would get checkmated. All in all, very short game, with an important moral, do not keep your king in the middle of the board, and try to castle as fast as you can. See you next time.